Hello, algebra students. If you're with me for this one, I am guessing you fell prey to three common student errors on an example like this. So first error is not knowing which solving method to choose. Let me show you what I mean. So this problem says solve 2x squared plus 8x equals negative 5. And this is what I want you to notice about this equation. Notice that it has both an x squared term and an x term. You could try to solve this all day long with our three wisdom principles of simplifying, getting the x's to the same side, and trying to isolate. And you would not be able to because this is not what we call a linear equation. Anyway, those methods are for linear equations. Now you might say, well, then how am I supposed to know it's a linear equation? It's actually when it's not a linear equation, it should be obvious to you. In this case, what we have is what's known as a quadratic. And the way I can tell it's a quadratic equation is that I have this square on the x, the highest um, exponent on an x is a square. But for your purposes, know that if you have a square, an x squared, and an x term, you don't want to use our wisdom principle. You'll want to go to the formula sheet and bust out the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula looks ugly, but it's not as scary as it looks. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root, nice and long, of b squared minus 4ac. Make sure all that b squared minus 4ac fits under the square root symbol. All over, make sure that fraction bar stretches from the minus sign all the way to the end to a. Lovely. Now that we have the formula, there's something else you need to know. Here's the second issue students have. You can't just go, oh, I see three numbers. Those must be a, b, and c. You have to have the quadratic equation that you have in standard form, standard form, before you can use this formula. And you say, okay, what is standard form? Why do you talk so much? Standard form basically just means the whole thing's equal to zero. So do you see how you have an x squared term and an x term, uh, but it says equal to negative five, not equal to zero? You want it equal to zero. In fact, sometimes I say a quadratic equation is like a party. You actually want everybody on the same side for once. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to take that negative 5 away and put it over to the left so that there's nothing left on the right-hand side. Let's do that. So I will add 5 because it is the opposite of subtracting of minus 5. And I'm going to do it to both sides. All right. And now let's see what happens. Well, there's no x squared term. I added 5, not 5x five squared. And I didn't add any x's either, so it's still positive 8x. So I basically just pop that plus 5 on the back end of all that, and the whole thing is going to be equal to 0. So what was the point of that? The point of that was now that it's in this form, I can see my a, my b, and my c. My a is my number multiplying with the square term. My b is my number multiplying with my plain old variable, my plain old x. And my c is my constant. So in this case, a is 2, b is 8, and c is 5. And they're all positive. And now I can substitute into this formula. So x is equal to negative b, the opposite of b. Well, we said b was 8, so it'll be negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So I'm going to be doing 8 squared minus 4 times a is 2, c is 5, all over 2 times a. And now it might look ugly, but it's just a matter of simplifying. And remember that when we're simplifying, we work inside of groupings first. And I have a lot of groupings going on here. I have tops of fractions, bottom of fractions. I have a square root symbol, which groups. And that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start inside this radical. Now, the nice thing is <coughs> your calculator can do everything on this expression except the plus minus. So 
you know what? I think I changed my mind. Let's do this. Let's do everything to the left of the plus minus sign. Everything to the right of the plus minus sign. And you might say, what's plus minus mean? It basically means there's two answers, guys. One if you add and one if you subtract. It's not some new kind of math to do. It's just um, me being too lazy to write this whole ugly thing twice. Once with a plus and once with a minus. And then I'm going to deal with what's on the bottom there. And let's do it all in our calculator. So no work to do for negative 8 plus minus. But I'm going to make sure that my calculator is in math print. So it gives me an exact answer. And I'm going to put the square root of, open up parentheses, 8, close those parentheses and square, minus 4, open up parentheses, 2, close, open for 5, close again, and I did that whole thing in my calculator and got 2 square root of 6. And then the bottom of the fraction there, 2 times 2 is 4. Hey, that's nice. All right, now, I can't do the addition or subtraction up top. It's just not going to happen because those two things are not the same kinds of things. I can't add negative 8 with two square roots of 6s, just like I can't add negative 8 with two x's. It's the same thing if I have two square root of 6s. So I can't add or subtract up at the top. And so I'm not going to break these guys up. And you can see the answers aren't broken up here either. They all have a plus and a minus still in them. But there's one thing you can do that you should be aware of on these examples. You can, even though these fractions are ugly, still reduce them. But the key is you have to be able to reduce all three of the whole numbers. The negative eight, the number that's outside of the square root symbol, in this case two, <coughs> and the number on the bottom four. They all have to be divisible by the same number in order to reduce them. And these numbers all are. They're all even, so they all have a 2 in them. Let's divide that 2 out of all of them. So dividing 8 by 2, I get 4. 2 by 2, it's just 1. <coughs> and 4 by 2 is 2. Sorry, you guys. I got a tickle in my throat. So now x is equal to negative 4, plus or minus. Just like I don't brag about 1x, I just call it x. Same thing about 1 square root of 6. I'm not going to say 1 square root of 6 when I can just say square root of 6. And then on the bottom, I have 2. Okay, so where do I see that? Oh, that's A. Negative 4, plus or minus the square root of 6, plus 2. And again, I'm not breaking up the plus minus because I can't do the adding and subtracting anyway. Might as well leave them together and be lazy. All right, you guys. Happy learning.